position of the missile. Five seconds after the motor stops, the missile could be on its way. This is a missile launcher on an elevator. Over there where the soldiers standing, that's another missile launcher. Down here there's two more. Behind this fan there's a complete setup just like this. We could have eight missiles ready to fire. We can only fire one until it goes out and hits its target. It'll be 100 miles from here in about 35 seconds. The missile goes up. 150,000 feet, 28 miles, turns and starts going out towards its target. It's made to fly in front of, above its target and explode. It's not made to hit its target. Okay, the back part of the missile, solid rocket motor booster cluster, 270,000 pounds of thrust for three and a half seconds. By the time, three and a half seconds of flight time, the back part's out of energy. The missile's at 4,000 feet. By the time the missile travels its length, it's breaking the sound barrier. By the time it gets to 4,000 feet, it's at Mach 2, almost. It continues up to about Mach 3.65, starts turning and diving down on its bar target. Okay, it's not made to hit its target. It's made to fly in front of, above its target, and explode. 12 to 18 seconds after liftoff, the back part of the missile, solid rocket motor booster cluster, will be back down on the ground somewhere. That's why if you look at it going through the gate, it's at a slight angle. 87 and a half degrees. 12 to 18 seconds, that booster, which weighs three and a half tons, will be back down on the ground somewhere. Hopefully, with a 20 knot headwind, it'll come down one to five miles from here. We do not want the booster coming down here. Don't want to have to do this. <laughs> okay, there's no guidance and no uh, parachute on it. When that thing lights off, flames come out of the rear 300 feet. Sound pressure goes to 150 decibels. Okay, at 100 and 112, people start dying. So you got to be in a blast-proof room or the far, farthest fan away from here and up on the IFC hill. None were ever launched from here. Okay, just due to that fact. Also, you have that white thing going up to 150,000 feet. The airliners really don't like it when that goes whizzing by. <laughs> okay, most of them were fired Fort Bliss, Texas. McGregor Range. Some were fired from Crete and Sardinia in the Mediterranean. Battery B, for, uh, 44th Artillery in uh, Korea. And then some from Alaska. And there were some fired from Hawaii. But the tourists didn't like these things screaming up. So they stopped doing that. And the boosters dropping out in the ocean. Any questions so far? Like I said, this is a launcher on an elevator. There's two more launchers over there. One more over here behind this white van. There's the same setup. We can fire any one of the eight missiles till it goes out and hits its target. Then we can fire another missile. That's this site. You go over to the Marine Mammal Center. You look between the two stop signs on the fence here. They could be doing the same thing. You go up to San Rafael where I was stationed. They could be firing. You go to Pacifica, they could be firing a missile. Lake Chabot could be firing a missile. Alviso was above ground site, they could be firing. Berkeley Hills could be firing. Travis Air Force Base could be firing. At one time, there was 11 sites in the Bay Area. So you would pick and choose who was going to fire? Our headquarters would pick and choose. First, it would come down from Mount Tamalpais, Rich Ballas. Then it would go to uh, Corvallis, Oregon. Then back to 6th Region, Cheyenne Mountain. You've seen war games and all that stuff. That's where our headquarters was. Then you'd have to get the release to use a nuclear weapon. And where would that come from? From Cheyenne? From Cheyenne Mountain. Not, yeah. Is that still active, Cheyenne? Yes, it is. And what's that conveyor? What's that long, like? Conveyor? Yeah, that's how you push the missile. That we didn't show you downstairs, or you weren't downstairs. Yeah. You physically push the missile to a remote launcher. I see. All that takes about three and a half minutes to do that. That's in the good old days, but there was always a hot battery. The hot battery means the people were up, sitting on the equipment, waiting. The missiles were up and armed. Within two minutes of firing a missile, 24 hours a day, they would stand these missiles down, they'd bring the missiles up there. On the other side, they would 
trailer them over? No, they would just bring that, that section up. Oh, I see. The crew up there would be exchanged for another crew. You'd do that for two weeks, then you'd stand down, then maybe the one across the way or up in San Rafael would take its place. And that would rotate between the, the seven Nike Hercules sites that were here at one time. Okay, I'm going to bring the missile down. Okay. I see quite a number of people here. We're having to make sure we control the numbers going up and down. So we will be counting a little bit, getting you loaded up. If we have uh, some scout troops here, we want to make sure you're in. Any other questions? And we take you to group. Yeah, and the other um, are very quiet sites that fired, here. they Thanks weren't the tests, right? First. They were real fires? When you come in from they were tests. They're, they're what they would do is once a year, they'd take the key we'll personnel from each site. Like they'd so bring them up. You'd bring them down to Texas if you're here in the States. And what you do is go through all the checks and procedures of assembling a missile. The launcher personnel would take care of the launcher. The radar personnel would make sure the radar was working, the computer was up. And then you were checked and graded, then you would actually fire a missile. That's so you wouldn't get...